The USA Junior Women try to make it three straight golds at the Junior Worlds, all next on a brand new counterattack. Hi everyone, Greg Meskel here. Thanks for joining us on the Counterattack, brought to you by the Rudy Project and XX2i. And we start in Volos, Greece, picking up from last week in the FINA Junior World Championships where the USA women were looking to make it three straight golds. They would be foiled by the home team, Greece, in the quarterfinal round. Let's go to highlights here. Low scoring affair, a lot of defensive battles in this tournament. Early on, Sarah Class will put Team USA ahead 1-0. Second quarter now. It's a 1-1 game. Lexi Leibowitz changes that, making it 2-1. We go to third quarter now. Leibowitz puts Team USA in front once more. 3-2 within the well would run dry. No more scoring for Team USA. Greece will come back with back-to-back -back goals. Team USA unable to rally once more. They fall in this one 4-3 and fall out of the medal round of the Junior Worlds for the first time in some time. They would then go on to play for fifth. That's the best they could finish. That's what they did, defeating Canada 11-9 in the semifinal round after that. And then in the fifth place game, another low-scoring contest. They outlast Hungary 4-2. Ryan Neuschel leading the offensive effort for Team USA. She finishes with 15 goals as Team USA goes 5-1-1 one, one in Volos, Greece. After the tourney, we caught up with head coach Coralie Simmons, goalkeeper Amanda Longin, their thoughts on their play at the Junior Worlds. Um, I think they, they battled, and I think that quarterfinal game really showed our character in terms of um, how much they're able to do and how much um, desire they, they have to, to winning and competing. And so we're proud of their efforts and um, being able to fight through and uh, play in front of a crowd like we had and experience the, 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 the venue to, at its best with the Greeks yelling and screaming and um, again just competing at the highest level and coming up short and then like I said finishing, finishing the tournament well. I've only played in you know very few games like that in a place where water polo is so well respected and um, everybody gets fired up. You know, I try and translate that and hope people are kind of cheering for our team. And I and I think about it that way. But when it comes to the pool, it was so fun and easy to play for the girls around me, even with people rooting against us. So I think the quarterfinal was great. It was really great, and we played solid defense and the girls made my job easier to do and I couldn't be more proud of how they played for each other in that game and there's only going up from here. Now we turn to college water polo. Three big games televised over the last week. Some screen grabs here. First on the Pac-12 network it was Cal the defending NCAA champs defeating UC Davis 15 to 10. Then Friday, a big matchup in the top three. Number three, Stanford visiting number two, USC. And it's the home team, the men of Troy, winning 8-6. to six. And then this past Sunday in New Jersey, West meeting East. UCLA, they got more than they could handle almost against Princeton. Jordan Kalina scoring six goals for the Tigers. But in the end, too much UCLA. They're able to win 14-8, first loss of the year. For the Tigers, some screen grabs here from ESPNU. That takes us nicely into our Cap 7 college scoreboard. First up, out of the Golden Coast Conference WWPA Challenge, it's a 12-9 win for Pepperdine over UC San Diego. Concordia edging Redlands in overtime. Back east, Wagner one goal better than Navy. And back west, UC Davis over San Jose State, 11-5. Next televised game, not for a couple of weeks, October 4th. Santa Clara at Cal, 7.30 p.m. Eastern, 4.30 p.m. Pacific on the Pac-12 Network. Make sure you set the DVR now. Let's keep it moving. Big honors announced this week from USA Water Polo. First up, the Junior Olympics All-American selections available now at usawaterpolo.org. Keep in mind, these selections are determined first on club finish, and then the athletes are selected by the clubs themselves. Congratulations to all those that were honored, available at usawaterpolo.org. And from there, in the pool to in the classroom, athletes that do it well in both venues. The USA Water Polo Academic All-American list was released last week. Congrats to all of our honorees. Nearly a 1,000 athletes recognized for their excellence in the water polo pool and in the classroom that also available at usawaterpolo.org. 
And now we get away from the pool and onto the golf course because the USA Water Polo Annual Golf Tournaments are on the way and registration is filling up fast. First up, the Southern California Golf Tournament. It's the 15th annual USA Water Polo Golf Tournament brought to you by the Sierra Federal Credit Union going down to the Oak Creek Golf Club in Irvine. That's on September 29th. And then from there, the Olympic Club 4th Annual USA Water Polo Northern California Golf Tournament and Auction Reception presented by Diablo Alliance Water Polo. That'll be at the Arinda Country Club in Arinda on October 9th. Registration open now, but keep in mind prices are increasing this week, so make sure you get signed up. Visit usawaterpolo.org slash golf. Off the golf course, back into the pool with a great opportunity for USA Water Polo members. We told you last week about our fall membership promotion. This one-time promotion running from now through the end of October benefits bronze and silver members. A chance to get signed up now. Lock in your membership through the end of 2018. Visit usawaterpolo.org slash fall promo for more information to find out how you can save today. Great news as 2004 Olympian Janai Kerr is joining the USA Water Polo staff as a sport growth manager, the multiple-time world championship participant and giver of water polo camps all over the country. He's an ambassador for the game. He comes on board, and we caught up with Janai last week to talk about his new role with USA Water Polo. My goals for the new position is to assist the existing staff members with improving small details with existing clubs and teams throughout the country. And I think even more importantly is developing new teams and leagues um, to fill in the gaps of parts of the country that don't have water polo. Most people involved in the sport know how passionate I am about water polo. I'm most excited about this new position because of the support that I have from USA Water Polo. Um, literally, it's a dream job where I get to continue doing what I love to do, but now with an entire organization, an entire country basically backing our efforts of grassroots sports growth uh, for water polo with youth and then continuing on th up through high school collegiate and even master's leagues. From one Olympian to another, congrats to Chris Oding, the multiple-time USA Water Polo Olympian and current women's national team assistant coach, was inducted into the Cal Bears Athletics Hall of Fame over the weekend. And Chris Oding in pretty good company, joined by NBA legend Jason Kidd. Here's a couple of photos from the evening. Congrats to Chris on a well-deserved honor recognizing his career in Berkeley. And now we close things out as we do every episode with our social media send-off, the best of what we have discovered water polo wise on the internet. Stay involved, use the hashtag counterattack, tag us at USAWP. A warning now, lots of Flop Friday going on this week. We start first though, reminder, Thunder Polo in Texas, they're collecting gift cards to help benefit those who need your support after Hurricane Harvey. Lend your support. Check out the tweet, see where you can send your gift cards. I appreciate everyone lending a hand here to those in need in Houston and the Texas area. From there, Olympians Brenda Villa and Heather Moody with high school athletes at the St. Francis Invite in Northern California. That's via the St. Francis SID account. And now we get into Flop Fridays. First up, Curtis High School Girls, the swim team with the synchronized flop. Down the end, a lot of folks is jumping in the pool. It's kind of hard to do this all at once if everyone holds hands and goes in, but you take a look. And from there, we go to Wissahickon Flop Friday, finishing up the preseason. Let's look at these flops. We'll tell you which ones are flops, which ones are not flops. Here we go. No, no, no. Yes, 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 yes. No, yes, yes. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. And not really. There you have it from Wissahickon. Thanks, Coach Greg, for sending that in. Appreciate everyone going for it on Flop Friday. Now we go to Northern California, Los Gatos. And this one coming via Twitter. They go for more Flop Friday action. Keep it moving here, still on Twitter. Not sure where this is, wasn't labeled, but it is an indoor pool via Jan sending this one in. <laughs> From there to Bakersfield, the Bakersfield Aquatics Club via Instagram. This is the in the water view they've submitted for Flop Friday. <laughs> and last but not least, back east, Mercyhurst Women's Water Polo. Check out this first flop, more like Mercy Hurts, am I right?
So there you have it, a ton of Flop Friday action. Some of the best we saw this week online. Make sure you use hashtag Flop Friday if that's what you're going to do, or just use hashtag counterattack. Tag us at USAWP. We'll share your stuff right here on the show. That'll do it for this week's episode. Thanks so much for joining us. And don't forget, when you're on the counterattack, even if you're going to Flop Friday, look weak side.